For many high school students thinking of a promising career, this would be a field trip to avoid. A visit on a cold day to a noisy, drafty building to watch steel workers cut, drill, and weld. But the kids from Benson High in Portland, Oregon are getting a sales pitch from Drew Park, the president of Columbia Wire and Iron. It's not a dead end situation. All the guys that are bosses typically started out uh, at the very bottom. By the time the tour is over, some of the students are seeing their future. It's amazing the skill they have to make sure that weld is just right. I like working with tools. I like working with my hands. It makes me feel nice and fuzzy inside. But is there a future working with your hands in America? Or is that in the past? Our report card shows that in the 21st century, America has largely stopped making things. In the year 2000, more than 17 million Americans were employed in manufacturing. By last year, that had dropped to fewer than 12 million. The same steep loss is seen across most industries. In 2000, more than 1,300,000 Americans built automobiles. In 2009, fewer than 674,000 were left in an industry that has continued shrinking. Ten years ago, nearly 700,000 Americans were employed making furniture. By 2009, that had dropped to 390,000. In the same period, the number of Americans making clothing has dropped by almost two-thirds. Those making shoes and other leather products is down by more than half. And it's not just old line work. Even jobs making computers have been disappearing, down from nearly two million ten years ago to just over a million in 2009. The problem is that those disappearing jobs are going to countries where workers are paid far less. In China, where health and safety rules are few and millions are looking for work, the average manufacturing worker earns just $134 each month, compared to almost $2,400 a month in the United States. But the problem is more than just the loss of manufacturing jobs to low-wage countries. Steelworker Brandon Nelson says we have lost respect for the kind of work that once provided prosperity. It's like nobody wants to do this work. They want to be in an office or work in front of a computer instead of building things. Some argue that it doesn't matter whether the factory floor is here in the United States or somewhere overseas. If Americans are being paid for doing the designing, engineering, and marketing, where a product is actually made is of little consequence. Take the huge success of Apple's iPod. 250 million of them have been made in Chinese factories, but the design and programming are done in America, which takes the biggest share of the profit. Those high-value jobs, however, could be the next to go to places like China and Taiwan, says Harley Shaken, a labor expert at the University of California, Berkeley. The countries where manufacturing is taking place by leaps and bounds today have their eye on that research and development. That's what they're going for. Just look at what's happened to cell phones. An American company, Motorola, developed the first portable cell phone, the Dynatac 8000X, in 1983. In 2009, nearly 1.2 billion cell phones were sold around the world, but not one was manufactured in the United States. And by last year, Motorola held just 3.6% of the world's cell phone market. The solution begins by questioning the conventional wisdom that America can thrive without manufacturing. That idea is just flat wrong. In Detroit, Jeffrey Immelt, the chairman of General Electric, announced plans for a $100 million research center in Michigan, creating 1,200 jobs. While General Electric has moved tens of thousands of manufacturing jobs overseas in recent years, Immelt says it's time for American companies to rethink outsourcing. That just is not sustainable. It's not a business strategy. To overcome the cost differences with low-wage countries, American businesses can be competitive by investing in technology, training, and new manufacturing methods to raise productivity. Labor costs are very important in any manufacturing economy, but what's critical is labor. Labor costs combined with innovation 
high productivity and quality. Each one of these connections all has to be fabricated to within a sixteenth of an inch. Drew Park credits exactly that. Innovation, productivity, and quality for keeping his business producing custom steel products competitive internationally and allowing him to pay his workers up to $60,000 a year. But to stay competitive, he needs more skilled workers. Our workforce is aging and we're having a hard time getting the younger generation involved. Park works with Portland's Benson High to encourage kids who like making things. At Benson, one of the rare schools that still runs a big shop program, you have to put a couple of terminal strips in there. Teacher then, Tim Harishu here. says there's no shame in wanting to work with your hands. But not everybody can sit in an office and just work behind a computer. It, do it doesn't work that way. And not everybody wants to. I surely didn't. For America to rebuild its greatness in manufacturing, perhaps it's time for the whole country to take a lesson from the students at Benson High, where they learn that working with your hands, making things, is not only honorable, it's essential. John Blackstone, CBS News, Portland, Oregon.